those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Believers, in times of adversity, remember to anchor your faith in God's unwavering love and promises. Trust in his divine plan and find strength in his presence. May this message serve as a source of encouragement and reaffirm your unshakable relationship with him. Remain blessed as you listen. Please look at me. You must obtain grace from God to refine two aspects of your life. Number one, you must refine your gifts. Number two, in fact, in order of priority, when it has to do with development, you must refine your mind. Then you must refine your gift. If you refine your gift alone, you will still be frustrated. There are two aspects that must be refined when it has to do with development. Number one is your mind. Number two, your potential. The mind is a very important component as far as excelling and greatness is concerned in this kingdom. Why? Because you see the Bible tells us that um, how does it put it now? It says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a mindset and a belief system Philippians 2 5 that Jesus had that made him great. He didn't just say let this power be in you. It's not only the power that was in Jesus that you need. You also need the mind that was in Jesus. Without the mind that was in Jesus, the power that was on him will be useless in your life. You need both his mind and his power. Everybody say his mind. Many people want the power that was in Jesus, but you do not want his belief systems. Your belief system is a summation of your paradigms, your viewpoints, your perspectives. Can I tell you, we are made or destroyed by our belief systems I have taught it here there's no need going to, you know to share it again but maybe just for one or two minutes let me tell you this that our mindsets are formed largely from number one culture number two our past experiences is that true number three our failures number four our association number five our levels of exposure all of these are factors that become the shapers of our belief systems the average person in nigeria and africa by the time you are age 10 by the time you are a teenager you would have been exposed to too many activities that would have respectfully speaking dehumanized and demean your perception of yourself therefore the bible says romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren by the message of god that ye Present your bodies, it says, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. Verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Say transform. What does it mean to transform? To evolve into superior versions of yourself. That's what it means to be transformed. To be transformed means to evolve into superior versions of yourself like a fly evolves from egg lava pupa and then adults you must obtain grace from god to evolve you've heard me teach it that your destiny is looking for you but not this current version of you the version of you that your destiny is looking for you are yet to become it the most important thing about success and greatness is not the achievements is what you become or have to become to obtain it what you have to become to be great is greater than the greatness itself are we blessed don't forget this the most important component as far as your growing into greatness is concerned is not the greatness itself and the possibilities that surround that realm is the person you are forced to become until you attain that greatness becoming is greater than doing you really become successful more from becoming than doing but the people that do know their god knowledge they shall be strong becoming then they shall do 
exploits it is knowledge transformation and then action not knowledge and action knowledge transformation is the reason why we do right things and get wrong results because you only do right things when you have become everybody say development i'm challenging everyone under the sound of my voice therefore that we have to obtain grace from god if we are truly serious about manifesting our kingdom destinies and rising unto greatness we must obtain grace from god having discovered our giftings we must begin an intentional a radical and non-emotional non-emotional project of transformation when you contend for transformation emotionally you will not go far when you feel sleepy when you are awake when you feel angry when you feel hungry no you must enter a covenant with yourself that come rain and come sunshine every 24 hour that god gives me will a major part of it will be invested in my transformation how are you transformed the bible tells you number one through the renewing of your mind how do you renew your mind by supplying into your mental space superior information superior word-based information and then repeating them until they superimpose the negative thoughts that have surrounded your mind hearing the truth once is not enough you must hear it again and again until it gains dominance over your mind then the bible now says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks you can declare in prayer and then all of these other things and then the bible also says for as he thinketh in his heart or mind he says so is he he didn't say so he will become you already are what you are thinking mental transformation is a miracle believers especially people who are largely spiritual and passionate about god because of that drive to encounter the holy spirit the power the anointing of the holy spirit many times we who god has trusted with grace for the miraculous for signs and wonders we have um we have fallen prey as far as emphasizing the importance of being mentally transformed because we feel what is the need for having an enlightened mind after all i have anointing after all i can pray after all i'm spiritual it takes more than that as far as your excelling is concerned jesus did not just wait until he was 30. even before we see him praying we saw him in the temple learning when satan came to him he didn't say i assume he said it is written are we together you must obtain grace from god to sit down dear nigerians especially the young population let's sit down and learn this this passion to run around and have premature manifestation sit down sit down we must obtain grace from god but apostle i went to school you know it's not enough you must sit down there are three levels of education there is unlearning there is relearning there is learning there are things you have to unlearn there are things you have to learn as new there are things you have to relearn as emphasis if these three levels is not happening to you you are not really educated education is not just an awareness of a body of information no you must unlearn deconstruct many belief systems that are wrong you must learn then you must relearn it is unlearning learning and relearning that is education i will say it again if you want proper enlightenment not just spiritual enlightenment secular enlightenment you must unlearn you must learn you must relearn develop your mind ask any ceo the difference between an exceptional ceo a fulfilled politician a technocrat an intelligent person one who is doing much for the kingdom a great man of god our fathers of faith are all over this nation we love them we honor them we admire them can i tell you something one consistent thread that runs across all the fathers of faith in this nation is that they are exceptionally brilliant people mention one dull one and you'll be the first mentioning it and the only one mentioning it there is no dull father of faith that i know who is making global impact because ministry is more than preaching 
preaching only accounts for at least 30 percent of ministry there is administration there is leadership there is diplomacy there are all kinds of factors involved in ministry for them to win this much it is the holy spirit in partnership with an enlightened mind we have this idea that god just landed on them and commissioned them find out their labor find out the things they do the little that we are doing for god here we can feel the heat and the disadvantage of not being enlightened please i encourage you from families to institutions religious and secular institutions business and all of that we must settle down to contend for knowledge settle down to contend for knowledge challenge yourself to be enlightened and don't let the devil make you think that what i'm sharing tonight is not important it is absolutely important the destinies of people are tied to your rising and your greatness it is selfish to refuse to be great because more than yourself there are people who will eat from the foot of your greatness are we together so discovery and then refining when you begin to refine your mind and refine your gifts it ushers you into the next phase of your season of preparation called the season of testing